Today's witness testimony was focused around one phrase repeated twice. I hit him. I hit him. Thank you for joining me for another recap episode of a day at the Karen Reed trial. I am your host, Mike, and this is a jury day episode of Just Legal History. And I am covering day two of the Karen Reed trial. As you can recall, Officer Sharif started the day with being cross-examined by the defense. They went directly after his recollection of him saying that Karen said she, that she hit John. He testified yesterday that he heard Karen say that he hit John. But on cross, the defense asked him about the report on the incident. And here is the clip. Truthful as possible, correct? Yes. You're trying to be as accurate as possible. Yes. As comprehensive as possible. Yes. And as thorough as possible. Yes. You wrote in that report, quote, Karen Reed kept screaming, is he dead? Is he dead? She was severely distraught and not able to tell me what happened. Correct? That's correct. Yes. The defense got Sarif to admit that he said that Aaron asked if he was dead, not that she hit him. Next up, that there was a little bit of a side discussion on was that the defense was asking about one of the ladies that was there at the scene. Specifically, they asked Sarif if he saw McCabe go back to the house, and here is a clip. To, to focus at this point is because I want to try to play this just once and see if you recognize what's depicted in the video. Sure. What I expect you may see is this person move out of, uh, out of sight behind the SUV, and then in the background, there's an SUV parked in the driveway. Pay special attention to that portion of the SUV and see if you see that person in the dark jacket pass from right to left in front of that SUV as if they're going to the house. Let's go ahead and play it. Go ahead and pause it. Have you seen the person in the dark jacket uh, leave the, the view? Yes. Did she appear to go behind the, the SUV? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and play it. Go ahead and stop, okay? And now I'm going to ask to draw your attention to that car with snow on it. Pay special attention to that car as the, the film continues, continues to run. Go ahead. Do you see a person standing in front of the car? It appears to be a person, yes. Walking from right to left? Yes. Would that be toward the house? Uh, yes, it would be. Okay. And also, if you could, wouldn't mind switching your perspective, now you're looking more at the front of the house. Continue watching the film and see if you see that same person walking toward the house. Did you see that? No, I didn't see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I saw okay. shadow, yes. Right. Shadow of a person yes. walking toward the front of the house. Yes. That was Jennifer McCabe going into the house, wasn't it? I have no idea. Was it a person going? It does look like someone does go back to the house. Saraf was asked if it was normal to allow people to go back to a house during an investigation. I think the defense will... Later say maybe Jen went back to get John's phone or something like that. We will see. His testimony was focused on the behavior of Miss Reed. His testimony helped the defense more than the prosecution because he described a distraught Reed and also asked if John was dead. Next up was Timothy Nuddle. He was an EMT who arrived to the scene of the crime. He talked about what the focus of the EMT's job was. And that, when they get to the place with an unconscious man, they check circulation and airways. Timothy describes putting one of those breathing bubbles on John and trying to get air in. They then put John in the ambulance and took him to Good Samaritan. 
Timothy did say there was better light in the ambulance and that he got a better look at the injuries. Timothy did also talk about the clothing and having to cut it off so they could try and treat John. I think the clothes and chain of custody will play a bigger part later. It was then turned over to Cross, and I want to play a clip that talks about two major issues that the defense tried to bring up. Mr. Nuttall, when it comes to being asked about um, consistency of causality as far as different uh, injuries that you observed on Mr. O'Keefe, correct? Can you phrase that for me? Sure. Poorly phrased on my part. So you would have been asked on, on cross-examination about some um, things uh, that, that the injuries you observed on Mr. O'Keefe could be consistent with as far as having been the cause of those injuries, correct? Correct. And uh, how many sort of myriad of, of other causalities uh, or how many myriad of other sort of uh, things could have also been a cause of, of the injuries that you observed? As stated, a lot. It's not typically just alter, um, physical altercations. It could be, again, a golf ball could hit you in the head uh, that could cause similar injuries. And just for, for clarity purposes, when you were asked uh, about um, a particular time frame, were you talking about the time frame of January 29th or were you talking about the time frame of February 8th when you met with Trooper Croft? <laughs> Sorry, so I rephrased that for me. Cool. Let me withdraw that and move on to something else. So what, just again, for clarity purposes, when you were asked about uh, some statements uh, that were attributed to you to Trooper Proctor during an interview, correct? Correct. Okay. And so with regard to what you recall differently, uh, is it the statement that the uh, person, the female with the blood on her face made to you or the, the statement of the other female telling that person to be quiet? So as stated, real quick, down and dirty, I asked, do you know this person? To which I got, I hit him, I hit him. And then in the background, I'm, I'm, I remember hearing over and over, I hit him, I hit him. That was kind of pushed towards the back, and patient care took priority, if that answers your question. So the first issue was that the defense was trying to get Timothy to talk about the injuries and whether or not they could be from a fight. That was objected and sustained. The defense's point of view was that the injuries were more, more consistent with the fight than being run over by a car. Then there were questions about what Miss Reed said. In this clip, Mr. Nuttall says again that he heard, I heard, I hit him, I hit him. The next witness up was Anthony Flamati, who was the uh, lieutenant of the, the ambulance. He got, star he got started, but then the court session ended for the day and will resume on Thursday, since there is no court tomorrow. So now, on to my opinion. It is still too early in the trial, and many things can still come up. But, but I think it's going to come down to the battle of experts. First will be the data that comes from the car. We will find out how much was retained by the car, and how much insight it gives into the accident itself. In the opening... The prosecutor said that it would show Karen backing up at 25 miles an hour and then speeding off. And then the bigger battle of experts will come from the opposing side's experts on the issue of what caused the injuries. One side will say car accident. One side will probably say a fight and maybe a dog being involved. It will then come down to which side the jury believes. I think the state should also address what needs to happen to believe the opposite side's story which is that a fight happened in the house. John was beaten to unconsciousness and then pushed outside the house, and then people hoped that he would die in the snow. And then all these cops conspired together. It could come to, down to how much the jury believes in cops in general and how much they think they are crooked. I am waiting to see what the car recording data will say about the accident. It has been a busy week with trials, with Daybell's Trial still going along with Trump's hush money case and some things going on with the Delphi case. Thank you for joining me for an episode of Just Legal History. If you haven't, please like and subscribe below.